uh, today we'll cover uh, two of our uh, recent works, um, Blend and Airlift. So I'll start with Blend and then I'll move on to Airlift afterwards. Uh, so uh, you can ask your questions in the YouTube chat. Uh, I'll try to check the chat and then answer your questions if there are any. Uh, so with that, I guess I'll get started. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I'm going to first present Blend today. Uh, so Blend, uh, a fast, memory efficient, and accurate mechanism to find fuzzy seed matches in genome analysis. Uh, this work was uh, published in Nucleic Acid Research, uh, Genomics and Bioinformatics this year. And it was also presented at the Recom conference uh, a month ago. Uh, this is a, a, a collaborative uh, work uh, with uh, ETH Zurich, uh, our uh, software research group, Carnegie Mellon, at uh, UW and Bacon University. So let me um, let me quickly cover uh, 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 a basic background on on genome analysis. Uh, so as we know that the high throughput sequencing machines uh, extract a smaller fragments of the original uh, DNA sequence uh, known as reads. So the challenge is usually to perform uh, genome analysis from these uh, small random uh, pieces of genomes because the main challenge is that we do not know uh, where the origin of these reads are in the actual uh, genome. And the goal is to figure out uh, their origins in, in their corresponding genomes uh, so that we can uh, uh, essentially um, complete the puzzle of, of, of genome assembly or, or, of, or read mapping as we covered in the previous lectures so that we can analyze uh, that particular genome of, of an individual. And there are several ways uh, of um, uh, uh, basically finding the origins of the reads, uh, which we will refer to as also identifying sequence similarities uh, between a read and a genome. And the first approach is known as uh, uh, mapping reads to a reference genome or read mapping. So in that case, uh, uh, we have a reference genome, which is a representative uh, genome of a particular species, for example, a human genome, human reference genome. Uh, and the particular reference genome is known to be accurate and uh, potentially as complete as possible. And uh, what we do is that we map the reads to our reference genome to find the potential ma uh, matching locations in the, in, the region, in the genome. And we can also identify the differences between a read and a reference genome. So those differences uh, could potentially be unique to an individual uh, leading uh, or allowing us to find some signs to identify mutations in, in, the, in the individual genome. So the second approach is to uh, overlap the reads to each other uh, to find similarities between them. So for example, like here, we, we may have some similarities between in the, in the overlap region of the reads. So this enables us to construct uh, the ANOVA assembly of, a, of an individual without mapping the reads to a reference genome. So when we were mapping the reads to a reference genome, reference genome could be considered as a backbone, as a clue where we can look at uh, to identify where a particular uh, read can belong to or where it may be originating from, uh, from its corresponding genome. But in the case of the ANOVA assembly, we don't have a, such a backbone. Rather, uh, we map the reads to each other uh, so that uh, we can essentially construct a genome from these overlaps by extending the reads uh, from their joints, from their uh, overlapping regions, essentially. But in any case, what we find is that the similarities uh, between sequences must be identified, whether this is uh, between a read and a reference genome or between uh, reads. Uh, and to so that like to facilitate a practical search uh, uh, among many sequence pairs, uh, we essentially want to 
do it as efficiently. So if we cannot do it efficiently, then you should imagine, uh, uh, um, for example, mapping a single read to uh, 3 billion different uh, regions in the reference genome in the case of human reference genome. So it would be extremely inefficient to do so. So to facilitate a, a practical similarity search, for example, between a read and the reference genome, for example, a reference genome, as I said, can be uh, 3 billion characters. Um, what we usually do is that we uh, build a, a index structure, um, which is usually based on a hash table data structure that includes uh, hamers or uh, subsequences of fixed line K, let's say from a reference genome, where we also store the locations where these hamers uh, appear in the particular reference genome. So this is useful because we want to quickly identify uh, quick, quickly identify the similar regions between a read and the reference genome. And we can use this particular hash table uh, to do so efficiently, usually in like three steps uh, that we follow in read mapping. And the first step is the seeding step. So in the seeding step, we determine the potential matching regions uh, in the reference genome uh, between a read and the reference genome. So as I said, these are the locations of these particular cameras that where, where we see them in the reference genome. And we then extract those cameras, uh, again, the same length cameras from reads, and then we query these cameras in the hash table. So such a query can tell us where these particular uh, KMERS exist in the reference genome so that we can focus on these regions uh, to continue our sequence similar to search rather than uh, uh, going over the entire reference genome. So now like we reduced our search space from the entire reference genome to these particular regions that we call seeds uh, that we find after matching the KMERS, let's say. And we can also apply further uh, filtering techniques such as chaining or pre-alignment uh, uh, filtering techniques to prune uh, some of the seeds in the reference genome. So after pruning those seeds, we tell ourselves that these seed regions were actually uh, unlikely to align uh, uh, to, to a particular read, so we further reduce the source space. And then the next step is usually but optionally to determine the exact differences uh, between the read and the reference genome uh, so that we can identify uh, the mutations or potential sequencing errors uh, within that particular read. Um, so let's focus on how we find these seed matches using hash tables. So let's imagine we have two sequences, sequence one and sequence two, and the sequence one can potentially be coming from a reference genome and the sequence two can be fro coming from a read, let's say. And then we can apply uh, some seeding techniques or uh, sketching techniques, let's say, to extract these particular uh, subsequences from, from a reference genome or sequence one. Um, so after extracting these seeds, uh, we convert them we use hash functions to generate their hash values. So rather than using the seeds itself, we actually uh, uh, convert them to their uh, hash values. And uh, we store these hash values in a hash table as keys and the values that these keys would return would be the positions where these uh, hash values or these particular sequences appear in the particular reference genome. So, so constructing such a hash table is uh, very useful because it enables us to quickly query these particular hash tables to find whether uh, we have a particular uh, 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 hammer or a seat in that hash table to identify the matching regions between 
a pair of sequences. So let's go over that step then to query the hash table. So now we're going to focus on sequence two, and then we're going to apply the same uh, seeding technique that we applied in sequence one to again extract some subsequences from sequence two. And then similarly, we're going to use the same hash function that we used here uh, to ensure that we generate the same hash value for the same subsequence uh, uh, whenever we see the same subsequence. Uh, after generating the hash values, what we're going to do is that we're going to query the hash table. So now, rather than storing these hash values, now that like we built the hash table by storing uh, 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 the hash values of all the seeds that appear in the reference genome, we can now query the hash, hash values that we generate from the read to identify whether that particular uh, uh, subsequence also exists in the reference genome or not. And after querying, the hash table will quickly tell us whether there's a match, meaning that that particular hash value exists in the hash table or, or it doesn't exist, meaning or no match. So this is pretty uh, uh, beneficial for us to uh, quickly reduce the search space as we covered in the previous slide to uh, quickly reduce the search space uh, from the entire reference genome to particular regions in the, in the, in the reference genome. And there are some uh, seed matching techniques uh, th uh, uh, that we apply uh, in these sequences because you might have asked yourself that like, where, like why we're selecting these particular subsequences but not these, let's say. And these are essentially determined by the techniques that we call uh, seeding techniques or like sketching techniques. These terms are uh, usually used interchangeably. Uh, depending on uh, on the on the particular algorithm that we're focusing on, let's say. Uh, so first seeding technique is uh, as a sampling uh, is it focuses on sampling the overlapping k-mers. Uh, so when I say an overlapping k-mer, you should uh, k-mers you should assume that uh, a k-mer is a fixed uh, a subsequence of a fixed length k. And the overlapping k-mer would be the next k-mer when you shift the character uh, by one and then keeping the same length again, uh, now like we're shifting by one. So here we have a one k-mer and then we shift by one character and then we can generate this particular k-mer again uh, from the reference genome, let's say. The overlapping k-mers would be, again, the all k-mers of a particular sequence uh, using a certain k value, in this case, seven. And uh, the sampling approach, one sampling approach is known as minimizers, and it focuses on uh, picking only a, a one k-mer in a window of k-mers, uh, so that we reduce uh, the storage requirements uh, of these k-mers that we generate from the reference genome, and the reducing storage requirements would then essentially improve the performance of uh, searching for these seeds because rather than searching for all of these uh, k-mers now, uh, now like I can focus on one of these and do the search in the hash table. So this also is essentially improves the performance. Uh, so in this particular technique, there are two main um, uh, uh, parameters. Uh, one is the k length and the second is the window length, so how many win uh, k mers that we're going to include. But essentially what we do is that we generate the hash values of these overlapping k mers and the challenge is the goal is to pick the, uh, uh, the k mer with the minimum hash value uh, and uh, we, we, we pick that particular hash value and then we store it in the hash table or query it in the hash table. So the idea behind the minimizers is that uh, when two sequences are relatively similar to each other, uh, then the minimizers uh, 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 guarantee that we're going to generate the same or we're going to pick the same uh, minimizer k as long as we use the same uh, hash function. Of course, depending on the parameters that we pick here. Again, as I said, uh, window length, uh, has a huge uh, impact on the accuracy and the performance of these minimizer technique. Uh, so let's also look at another seed matching technique known as the space seeds. 
so this space seed, uh, the goal of space seed is to, uh, space seeds is to allow mismatches at certain positions uh, of these uh, k-mers. So when we want to match these particular k-mers to each other, they will not match because their hash values are going to be different if we if we were to follow uh, an approach similar to minimizers, let's say. Uh, but then the intuition is that these k-mers are still uh, uh, highly similar to each other. Perhaps uh, maybe they are they differ only by one or two characters. And the goal is to somehow uh, make these subsequences or make these k-mers match each other by ignoring uh, 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 the the characters. Uh, where they may be different uh, between two uh, sequences. And to do so, the space seeds uh, apply a pattern on these k-mers such that some of the fixed uh, uh, positions or the some of the fixed characters are ignored. So you can assume that we're replacing the characters at particular positions with don't care characters, in this case, x. So when we do this, even if basically, so let's look at this particular example here. If we have C and we have A. Uh, so if we convert both of them to X, then they are essentially going to match because, um, by the way, these are called spaces because when we hash these sequences, rather than hashing them, when we hash these, then we're going to generate the same hash value because this string, uh, and this string are identical to each other. So they should generate the same hash value, although these two strings weren't identical. So we somehow by luck, let's say, uh, we made them equal to each other by applying this particular pattern. So the, then the choice of patterns, of course, is critical for the effectiveness of space seeds. So now I'm going to cover uh, one last uh, seed matching technique uh, known as uh, linked k-mers or stropmers, and the goal is to allow insertions and deletions uh, as well as the potentially the uh, uh, mismatches as we covered in space seeds. Again, like we're now looking at some longer sequences so that we can um, uh, show you what, where the um, insertions and deletions can be coming from between two uh, sequences. So in this particular example, these two subsequences are different than each other, but uh, if you picked the minimizers from both of these sequences, then we could have actually picked the same minimizers. So this could tell us that these two subsequences can actually essentially be similar to each other, but maybe they differ uh, because of certain insertions and deletions. So the goal is to avoid uh, or somehow ignore these insertions and deletions so that we can match these potentially similar sequences to each other. So what uh, we essentially do to enable that is after picking, uh, after selecting some k-mers, for example, by applying the minimizer technique, we link those uh, k-mers to each other and then generate uh, somehow, let's say, a compressed uh, string for out of out of these longer strings, so we call these uh, seeds or strings strobmers, and uh, rather than hashing these longer sequences, we hash them uh, so that we can generate the same hash value if uh, these selected k-mers are exactly matching between uh, two sequences. Uh, and doing so, we ignore the potential insertions and deletions that may be happening between these potentially similar sequences. And then we were able to match them. Um, so uh, by far, uh, you might have noticed that uh, whatever we, the, the seeding technique we do, uh, at the end, we hash these seeds. This enables us to find seed matches with a direct lookup of the hash values, right? Because rather than storing these sequences, which could be costly to store them in a hash table, uh, we essentially shrink them into uh, uh, um, the hash values using certain amount of bits, let's say 32 bits. 
And this ensures us that we're always within a particular uh, 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 space budget when we're storing these strings in the hash table. Uh, and the main uh, uh, benefit of using these hash tables is as essential as I said, like we can uh, find the matches between hash values very efficiently with a direct lookup of these hash values. And to do so, the uh, low collision hash functions are mainly used. This means that uh, seeds must exactly match to generate the same hash value. So here, in this case, we have the space seeds, and these seeds have to exactly match so that uh, we can essentially uh, subsequently generate the same hash value so that we can match them in the hash table. Um, and of course, uh, using the low collision hash functions are advantages because it makes it uh, uh, unlikely to match the dissimilar seeds because we would be assigning different hash values for these dissimilar seeds. But there is also one particular limitation uh, of using low collision hash functions is that the highly similar seeds, or we call fuzzy seeds in this work, are also unlikely to match. Although, uh, so our main goal when mapping the reads to a reference genome or to, to each other is to figure out where these reads may be coming from or where their origins may be in, in, uh, in, the, in their corresponding uh, genome. And when we're exactly matching the seeds uh, to figure out, uh, to reduce the space from the entire reference genome to, to these uh, 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 particular regions, uh, the exact matches may, be, uh, uh, may not be sensitive enough, meaning there may potentially be some other regions where the seeds are not exactly matching, but they are still highly similar to each other. Meaning that if we align the read to that particular region, we would be still in a particular edit distance uh, budget. So this means that by forcing the seeds to exactly match uh, to a particular region uh, could lead us to uh, uh, generating uh, less accurate results. So um, I'll uh, cover all these potential uh, limitations or challenges in this slide when uh, matching the exact seeds, uh, when matching the seeds exactly to each other. Um, so the main limitation is it, it occurs when adjusting the many seeding parameters when we're matching the seeds exactly to each other. The one parameter is the k-mer size. So the question is, should the k-mer be long or short, because if it was long, then finding the long exact matches is less likely than finding uh, shorter exact matches, right? And the second parameter is, in the case of, for example, minimizers, is the window length. Uh, should it be, again, long or short? So longer windows would, would provide a better sampling, meaning it, they would further uh, reduce the space requirement and essentially improve the performance. But then if we sample too much, then we, we can lose also accuracy. We can miss some uh, seed matches that we, could have, uh, we would have found otherwise by using a, a, a shorter window length. So all these parameters determines, of course, the content of the hash table, which then subsequently determines the performance and accuracy of our genome analysis. So there's always this trade-off between performance memory and accuracy when uh, exactly matching the seeds to each other. And now basically I'll try to uh, convince you about the potential opportunities of, uh, of using fuzzy seed matches. So uh, a fuzzy seed matching to reiterate myself uh, is to uh, find uh, highly similar, is to match the highly similar seeds to each other. Not necessarily the exactly matching, but also the highly similar ones uh, to each other. So such a mechanism uh, for finding seed matches can enable assigning the same hash value to highly similar seeds. So in this case, we again have space seeds, but those space seeds, although we apply the particular pattern, they still differ uh, because we actually missed uh, the positions or the character where they 
differ from each other because the pattern applies uh, 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 applies the don't care characters to particular positions without knowing if they differ or, or not at these particular positions. Uh, here in this case, assume that we're missing the uh, um, character that these two space seeds uh, are differing from each other. But a fuzzy seeding technique could still generate the same hash value, although they differ from each other, but they are still highly similar to each other, such that we can generate the same hash value and then uh, we can query it in the hash table uh, so that we can find these fuzzy seed matches by just looking at their hash values. And the other goal is, of course, we still want to assign the different hash value for dissimilar seeds because we want to make sure that we're not really finding seed matches where the seeds are not really similar to each other, right? So we also want to do it uh, uh, with a high performance, meaning we don't want to calculate the distance or similarity calculation between these seeds, right? Uh, we want to generate these hash values very efficiently without any distance calculation. And we want this method to be space efficient, meaning we don't want to really generate multiple hash functions or multiple hash tables uh, as uh, usually uh, done in uh, many uh, local sensitive hashing methods uh, to identify seed matches by, for example, calculating the jacquard similarity or by finding a single seed match in one of these multiple hash tables. So it needs to be space efficient as well, ideally by using a single hash table. Um, so finding uh, useful and novel seed matches that cannot be identified when finding only exact uh, matching seeds uh, uh, can be essentially achieved uh, uh, using these fuzzy seed matching technique. And this also enables us to rethink the seeding parameters uh, to achieve better trade-off between performance, memory, and accuracy. And these seeding parameters would be the camera size and window length and many other seeding parameters. So now that I covered some basics uh, in read mapping and seed matching, uh, I'll now uh, uh, go, go over our goal. Uh, but before that, um, I'll quickly check the uh, YouTube chat uh, to check if there are any questions. Uh, that I need to answer before I move on. Okay, currently there are no uh, questions that I can see. Okay. All right, so apparently there are no questions. I'm moving on. Um, so let me then uh, go over our goal in this work. Our goal in this work is to enable finding positive matches of seeds, as well as exact matching seeds with a single lookup of hash values of seeds. Uh, to this end, uh, we propose Blend in this work. Uh, so Blend uses a hashing mechanism called uh, SimHash. Uh, that can generate the same hash values for similar sets. Uh, Blend then provides the mechanisms for accurate and efficiently converting seed sequences into set of items so that we can use these set of items with the same hash technique to generate the same hash value for similar seed sequences. Uh, so I'll now quickly uh, describe uh, how SimHash technique works with an example. Uh, so the goal in the SimHash technique is to generate the same hash value for similar set of items. So we have an example input here, a sentence. Here, this is the example sentence. And uh, uh, where we also have a set of items in the sentence. And the set of items would be the words in that particular sentence uh, or you can just uh, uh, assume that the hash values of these words, because what we essentially do is that after identifying the words or the items in the set, we start working uh, with the hash values of these items in, in, the, in the set. So 
uh, what we essentially do in the same hash technique is we count the net difference between zeros and ones at each position of this of these hash values that are represented in their binary form. Uh, so I'll basically show it with an example, how we count such uh, net differences of zeros and ones. Uh, here, the zeros will be zero bits and the ones will be uh, the one bits. Uh, so at each position means that we start with the most significant bit, which is the left mod, left mod positions in this hash value and also in this uh, vector that we use as a counter vector to count net difference between zeros and ones. And what we essentially do is that we count all the zeros and ones here, and then uh, show the net difference between zeros and ones. And if you see a zero, then this would mean that the number of zeros and ones at, the, at this particular positions is equal to each other. So the net difference is zero. Here, uh, we show the net difference uh, at the uh, least significant bit position, which is the rightmost position. And here, we're seeing plus two value. By just looking at it, at it I can tell that there are uh, more ones than zeros. And the net difference of, uh, because the, the, the sign is positive, so this is the encoding uh, in the counter vector, if it is positive, then there are more ones than zeros. If it is negative, then there are more zeros than ones. Uh, and by looking at the value, I can directly tell how many uh, ones we have more uh, than, the, than the zero bits here. And in this case, we have two more ones than zeros. And here we have a, a negative value. This means that we have uh, more zeros than ones. So why is this important? Uh, this is important because we directly use this counter vector to generate the same hash value of this particular set. So the set again was a sentence and the items of that set was the words. And if we use the hash values uh, from all of the items of the set to generate this counter vector. And uh, when we generate the hash value for a set, we use the counter vector meaning we use all the items somehow to generate this particular hash value for a particular set. So the, the advantage uh, of that, the, 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 the same hash value is that, uh, so for each um, position in the bit in, in of these hash values, uh, we look at the counter vector uh, uh, result. And if it is plus, meaning if there are more ones than zeros, we assign the corresponding bit to one. And if it is zero or uh, negative, then we assign the corresponding bit as zero. So this means that by just looking at this particular sim hash value and by just ignoring this counter vector, I can tell at which positions there were more ones than zeros, right? So just looking at this, least significant bit, for example, I can directly tell without even doing this computation that there are more ones than zeros. So this is actually a very important property of SimHash. This is because uh, when, this, when, when we have two uh, sets that are highly similar to each other, this indicates that only a few items between these two sets will differ. So Let's go over with an example to exemplify uh, to, to show this. So let's assume that we're now generating another highly similar uh, uh, set, uh, uh, a similar uh, to this uh, to our original sentence by changing the word from hash to sim hash here, and then this would indicate that the hash value would also change uh, to some other random value. But it's not really important that we're generating completely random value here because when we uh, integrate this, when we recalculate the counter vector by again using all of these hash values, what we can uh, observe is that although the values differ, the, the actual values, as you can see from the previous version to the new version, the actual values differ. Although they differ, the, the majority results of zeros and ones 
uh, are likely to not change. Meaning if there were more ones at a particular position, and if I just change a single hash value, then it is still likely that I'm going to keep having more ones than zero because changing a single bit is unlikely to change the particular uh, major, majority voting result. Then this means that if the majority voting of these uh, bits uh, are not changing uh, to each other, then this means that uh, the sim hash value that, that we're generating essentially by looking at these counter vectors won't change. So what does this mean? And this means that if two sets are highly similar to each other, their counter vectors may be slightly different than each other, but their major results are unlikely to be similar, meaning they are going to generate, they are likely to generate the same hash value. So it's, it's not guaranteed, of course, that they are going to generate the same hash value, but it gives us a chance, let's say, for highly similar sets uh, uh, to have the same uh, hash value. So the challenge here is then is to efficiently and accurately uh, convert these seeds to a set of items uh, to use with SimHash. So uh, this is where Blend comes into play, let's say. So this is the overview of Blend. And in, in Blend, our goal is to efficiently find fuzzy seed matches with a single lookup of hash values. And the input that we provide to a blend is a fixed length sequence. So this is a seed sequence. This could be KMER. This could be a minimizer sequence or a Stubmer sequence. It doesn't really matter. So this is essentially an input sequence that we want to generate the hash value from. Uh, so what we want to do is that we want to efficiently and accurately convert the seed, convert the seed, particular seed, to its set of items so that we can use it with the sim hash technique because the sim hash technique takes a set of items as input. And we provide the two conversion mechanisms uh, for that. We call blend I and blend S. And after identifying the set items from these seeds, we use the sim hash technique, as I explained earlier, to generate the hash value of, of this particular seed from its set items. And then uh, we can efficiently identify fuzzy seed matches by matching the same hash values using a, using a hash table. So I'll now go over the blend I technique, one of the uh, 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 techniques that we use to identify the set items from seeds. And the goal is to convert seed sequences uh, into a set of items. So here input is a fixed length subsequence, is a, set, is a fixed length sequence, for example, a seed sequence. And what we do in blend I is that we extract all overlapping k-mers of the seed that we call neighbors. So here, this could be a one, let's say, minimizer k that we would have picked. Then what we're essentially doing is that we're actually dividing into, into further k -mers, let's say, to extract all overlapping k from this particular seed. Uh, and as I said, yeah, these are called neighbors. And uh, uh, then we hash all of these neighbors and then generate their hash values. So these hash values uh, that we generate from these neighbors of that particular uh, seed sequence are the set items that we're going to use to generate a hash value for this uh, uh, sequence. Uh, the the another mechanism is the blend S mechanism. So I'm not going to go over uh, uh, in a very detailed manner to explain the blend S because it's pretty similar to blend I, only with a minor difference, which is uh, if we're if we are using, for example, uh, a linked K-mer strategy, for example, a Stropmer, then it doesn't really make sense to extract all overlapping K-mers because there is an information gap actually between these linked k-mers, which, which are these, uh, 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 which are the parts that we do not link in the in the stop mercy, let's say, right? So we we completely ignore these parts and we only link them. So since there's such a gap, uh, it's not really useful to extract all overlapping k-mers, and it could be sufficient just to extract the k-mers. 
that are linked to generate this uh, stop merge seed uh, from this particular sequence to the, to the stop merge sequence. And this is essentially what we do in blend S. We extract only the link k-mers in stop mers. Here in this case is GCTA. For example, this was linked from here, GCTA to here. And the second link is TTAA, which is here. And we take all of these link k-mers and then we use them as neighbors. And then similarly, similar to blend I, we hash them and then we generate the hash values of these neighbors. And then we use these hash values as set items again for that particular uh, 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 seed sequence. Now that we identified the set items uh, of the seeds, now we can generate the hash values of, of these seeds using the same hash technique. And the goal, again, generate the same hash value of a seed by using the set items from blend I or blend S. So you can assume that the set items are uh, uh, provided from these two mechanisms. And you can assume that these are the set items that we extracted, let's say, using these two techniques. Uh, then what we essentially do is we do a binary two vector encoding using a SIMD technique. Uh, this is because we want to subtract uh, uh, one from the counting uh, in the SIMHash technique whenever we see a zero and we want to add one whenever we see a one so that we can uh, calculate the net difference of zeros and ones at each bit position because remember our encoding was, if we see a plus, then there are more ones. If we see a minus, there are more zeros. And in order to achieve that, we essentially just subtract by one whenever, see, whenever we see zero. And then we do, we, we convert this to their vector encoding because we use SIMD operations to uh, perform the uh, uh, addition and summation computations, let's say, uh, efficiently. And this is what we do. We use all these vectors to do a bitwise summation at each position to generate this counter vector, again, using uh, SIMD operations. And then by looking at the signs of these values, we do a decoding to generate the SIM hash value of a seed. If there, again, like if this is negative, then the corresponding position, the bit position of the hash value would be zero. And if it is positive, then it would be uh, one. Uh, and then, this would this particular hash value that we generate for a seed would then have all the properties of the sim hash technique. Meaning, if we have two highly similar seeds, then if you use the same seed extraction technique, a set item extraction technique, which is either blend I or blend S, then the items that we are going to extract from these highly similar seeds are going to be also very similar to each other. Meaning, then we're going to lead to hopefully generating the same hash value uh, so that we can uh, find these fuzzy seed matches efficiently. Yes, essentially, so we use these hash values with the hash table either to store them or query them. So we're, we, we're aware that the uh, uh, blend can be integrated actually pretty easily for any seeding technique. So this could be done by uh, 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 getting the sequences, uh, let's say reads, and then integrating the blend with any seeding technique uh, accurately so that the blend can work with the seeding technique to, to generate the hash values, to extract the seeds from these sequences and then to generate the hash values. And then similarly, we can store and query these hash values using the hash tables as also explained earlier. Uh, Although this can be integrated to any seeding technique, we integrate as a proof of work, we integrate it to the minimizer technique. Uh, here, how we envision that and how we implement uh, blend with the minimizer. Uh, so we extract all overlapping k-mers in a window of k-mers. And then we use blend i technique for all of these extracted uh, k-mers in a window to generate their hash values. And then, from these hash values, we find the minimum one. So here again, for example, the minimum one is particularly this one. Uh, then we store it in the hash table or query the hash table. So here, by doing so, uh, uh, we enable generating the same hash value for highly similar seeds. Uh, and if there is basically an, another 
sequence with the similar seeds, then it is also likely that we're going to generate the same hash value, although the seeds are maybe differing than each other uh, uh, slightly. So the another seeding mechanisms, uh, mechanism that we use with plant is the Strobmer seeds. So we take the Strobmer seeds as is uh, after linking the k-mers, uh, let's say, and then we use the blend S technique to generate the hash values of these Strobmer techniques, and then we use the hash tables to store or query the hash tables. Um, so with that, uh, I covered all the mechanisms in blend. So now I'll go over the evaluation part. Uh, so we integrated Blant into Minimap2 uh, to perform end-to-end -end mapping. Uh, in our evaluation, we used real and, real and simulated data sets from PecBio, iFi, and CLR. So these are accurate and uh, less accurate reads from uh, Oxford Nanopore Technologies and from Illumina reads, which are, uh, the, the Illumina reads are essentially providing short reads. Uh, we also used uh, our various uh, genomes. Um, for example, we used the human genome, uh, CHM13 and the HGO2 sample. We used fruit fly genome, we used yeast and E. coli genomes as well. So we have two use cases uh, in our evaluation. First one is read overlapping, which is providing the all versus all overlapping, uh, which could be used uh, to construct the Zenova assembly. This, and essentially, this is what we do uh, to evaluate the accuracy, completeness, and the contiguity uh, of the read overlaps uh, uh, to evaluate the uh, uh, read overlapping uh, uh, improvements, let's say, using blend and other tools. And the second use case is read mapping, uh, mapping reads to a reference genome. And we uh, calculate the mapping accuracy from uh, simulated reads. And also we uh, perform structural variant calling and then uh, uh, calculate the accuracy of that structural variant calling as well to evaluate the read mapping accuracies. Uh, before uh, going all, uh, over uh, these read overlapping and read mapping results, uh, I also want to show the empirical analysis that we did on fuzzy seed matching. Uh, so this means that um, we identify the non-identical minimizers with the same hash value, which would indicate a collision in this case here. Uh, uh, so then what we do is that the, we also calculate the edit distance between minimizer cameras with the same hash value. So those are going to be shown here on the x-axis. And we also calculate the ratio of collisions with a certain edit distance using minimap2 and blend. So we have minimap2 and uh, different configurations for blend. Here, the numbers are showing how many neighbors that we're including uh, in blend. Uh, so the higher values would mean that we're extracting, let's say, more k-mers, uh, more set items to generate a hash value for a single seed. So the goal in uh, blend or in fuzzy seed matching is to increase the collision rate for highly similar seeds. So this is essentially our goal. And here, this figure shows the collision uh, ratios for minimap2. And here, we almost have a nice um, uh, uh, Gaussian distribution over here, uh, where uh, the, the largest, the most ratio is around uh, uh, 10 edit distance. Uh, meaning we have collisions between minimizers. And these, uh, whenever there is a collision, those minimizers are not really similar to each other because their edit distance are particularly high. And what we want to do is that actually we want to increase the collision around this area so that we can see we have a selective collision in a sense that those collisions are highly similar to each other and there are many of them. And this is what this figure is showing. So we still have of course, collisions in the case of blend for dissimilar uh, seeds, 
And those collision ratios are pretty similar to the, in the case of Minimap 2. But what's different is that we also increase the collision rate, especially for edit distance 2, uh, specifically for edit distance 2, which is telling us that uh, we're generating the same hash value for uh, highly similar seeds. So this is essentially our observation. Blend increases the collision rate for highly similar seeds while keeping the collision rate similar to minimap two for dissimilar seeds. So we're selecti selectively increasing the collision rate for highly similar seeds. So this is the read overlapping uh, analysis results and the figure on the top showing the performance results in terms of CPU time and the figure on the bottom showing us the peak memory uh, uh, results. Here the y-axis are showing those numbers and on the x-axis we have different data sets from uh, human genome uh, to fruit fly, bacteria, uh, yeast, uh, etc. Uh, and so although Blend provides a uh, speed up, so these numbers are the speed ups or st speed ups compared to Minimap2 and, and MHAP, I'll mainly focus on the uh, results for hi-fi reads. So those are the hi-fi data sets are here, and these are the essentially very accurate reads. And what we see is that Blend provides an average speed of almost 40x compared to Minimap2. And it also reduces the memory footprint by 7.2x. We can do this because uh, we can now improve the criti critical parameters without decreasing the accuracy because now we can find more useful seed matches by playing with these parameters. And in this case, we can increase the window length up to 200 and the seed length up to uh, 31 by either keeping the same accuracy or even uh, improving accuracy in the read overlapping case. So this, is, this, is, this can be done by finding these fuzzy seed matches that the exact seed matching techniques cannot find. Uh, for example, in the case of Minimap2. So uh, I'll now show the uh, assembly evaluation results. So those are the, these are the assemblies that we generate uh, after finding the read overlaps using each tool. Uh, so we essentially show uh, the results for, again, uh, the hi-fi reads, although you can find the results for uh, other data sets in our full paper. Um, here we have the average identity genome fraction and chemical completeness. Uh, uh, and also on the right side, the largest quantity uh, NGA and NG50 results. And by looking at, uh, uh, again, the hi-fi data, uh, we see that the blend generates more accurate and complete assemblies uh, by looking at these particular values. And also it leads to better contiguity in usually in most cases. Uh, fuzzy seed matches can lead to finding novel and useful overlaps. So I'll quickly also show the performance and memory results for heat mapping. So this is a similar figure that I showed in the previous slide. We have CPU time peak memory here and the uh, different data sets. Uh, over there, but now we compare blend against Minimap2, LRI, um, we know Map2, SH, and Strobe Align. So what we see is that, again, Minimap2, uh, blend provides an average speed up of 1.7x compared to Minimap2 and a similar peak memory usage uh, across all data sets, not necessarily on the HiFi data set. And what we see is that the computational cost of sequence alignment slightly hinders the benefits of fuzzy seed matching because the sequence alignment is also a, a, a very costly step in genome analysis. So we also do structural variant calling using the read mapping results uh, that we generate using uh, blend uh, uh, and minimap2. Um, so what we do is that uh, we use sniffles2 to call the SVs from HGO to long read mappings. And we, we use TrueWary to compare the resulting SVs with the benchmarking SV set, which are the tier one set from a genome in a bottle uh, benchmarking suite. And uh, we compare blend with Minimap2, LRA, and Minimap2. And this table shows the true positive, false positive, false negative, precision recall, and F1 values uh, for each tool. And overall, what we see is that by looking at the F1 score, which summarizes all these accuracy results nicely in a single value, 
it shows us that the blend can generate the best overall accuracy in downstream analysis when doing uh, SV calling uh, using the HiFi uh, HGO2 long reads. So I'll now uh, provide the summary of blend. Uh, the problem that we're trying to solve is, is finding exact uh, matching seeds introduce limitations in further uh, improving the performance and accuracy of genome analysis. And our goal is to find fuzzy seed matches as well as exact matching seeds accurately and efficiently. For that, Blend provides the effective mechanisms for converting seeds into a set of items so that we can use them with the same hash technique. And we use the same hash technique to enable generating the same hash value for highly similar seeds to find fuzzy seed matches with a direct lookup of hash values. The key results that we show is we show a significant speed up and lower memory footprint, especially when using high fire reads and uh, blend can improve the accuracy of important applications in genome analysis because of finding novel fuzzy seed matches. Now, blend is published in a uh, nucleic acid research genomics and bioinformatics journal this year. So this is the QR code that you can use to access the paper. This is a, a full open source. And we have our source code as well. This is the QR code to our source code. So with that, I'll uh, now complete the uh, blend presentation and we'll switch to Ailey.